Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Well, hello everybody out there on YouTube land. This is Cool Dude Clem once again. And today there's going to be some audio stuff, some transformer slash power supply stuff, and some flyback stuff. So there's some stuff pretty much for everybody. So let's get started with the audio stuff. Right now what you can see here is an automatic game control circuit that I've made. I found a schematic for it on the internet and I've built it. And even though I haven't used the exact same components that were specified in the schematic, these transistors came out of an old 1970s something or other, can't remember what. It still seems to work. And the audio that you're hearing right now is going through this circuit. It's supposed to be a microphone preamp, but I found it works best at line levels, probably because of the transistors I've used. So the basic setup I've got here is I've got the microphones connected up to the reel-to-reel, -reel, and I've got the reel-to-reel's headphone output connected up to this little AGC. And I've got the output of the AGC connected up to this cassette deck, which is recording the sound. And I must say this little circuit certainly seems to be able to do its job. Now the reason why I built this AGC circuit is because in my videos I'm constantly moving about, sometimes I'm far away from the microphone, sometimes I'm closer to it, and this makes editing the video harder than it needs to be because I'm constantly having to adjust the volume levels to compensate for that. But with the AGC doing all that work for me, it's going to make my video productions much easier. Now I'm holding the microphone at a reasonable distance and as you can hear it's picking up pretty good. And when I bring the microphone close up to my mouth, as you can probably hear, it sounds no louder. It's certainly compressing the audio down to a reasonable level. And I will put a link up to the schematic, it'll be um, uh, about there somewhere. So if you want to build the circuit for yourself, you can. And yes, I'm not going to keep this microphone preamp on the turntable, I was just doing that so I could show you it. I'm going to move that somewhere else so I can play my records again. But anyway, the next thing in this video that I'm going to do is build a ZVS flyback driver. I've no idea how well it's going to work, or even if it's going to work at all, but let's find out. Okay, this is the ZVS driver that I've built. It's based on the infamous ZVS circuit that I'm sure some of you have seen on your internet travels. And this one is built exact to that schematic, except for a few changes. And that's only because I don't have those particular parts. Firstly, there's this capacitor here, which should be a 0.68 microfarad, and I don't have any of those. But I've experimented with different capacitors and found that a bigger capacitor produces better arcs. Right now I've got a 1 microfarad capacitor there. Next, there's this coil, which should be between 47 and 200 microhenry. And I have absolutely no idea what this is right now. I just wound a bunch of wire around a ferrite ring, but it seems to work. And lastly, these two transistors you can see are IRFP260 MOSFETs. Anyway, that's enough rabbiting, let's see what this thing can do. As you can see, they're not really tremendous. But it is oscillating, as you can see, or it wouldn't be able to produce an arc. I think if the transformer I was using was just a little bit more powerful, those arcs would be much more impressive. Now I have my multimeter connected to the transformer's output and as you can see it's doing about 28.2 volts. Now when I connect up the driver, the ZVS driver, as you can see there's a little bit of a voltage drop there. And when I do an arc, you can see it tremendously drops down. The transformer is really struggling to power this thing. So we need a stronger transformer. Well, it's obvious we need a bigger transformer. So I'm going to wave my magic wand and produce one. There we are, a microwave transformer. Now I'm going to modify this to power the ZVS. Now, one thing I've always been curious about is if I was to put mains voltage into the high voltage secondary, I just wonder what kind of voltage that I'd get out of the primary. So that's what I'm going to experiment with now. Before anybody asks, 
I have disconnected the secondary from the core of the transformer, so it should be quote-unquote safe. Now, I have no idea what kind of voltage is going to come out of this. So this is a first time for me and probably a first time for you. So let's see what kind of voltage we have coming out of the secondary. Oh, we have about 23 volts. That might be just enough for the thing that I'm doing. Well, I don't really think there's much in the way of modifying needed to do to this transformer. Use the secondary as the primary, and the primary as the secondary. And it should be a pretty good transformer for my needs. This is ridiculous. It's the middle of the day, and a huge moth just flew in the window. I'm not kidding, in the middle of the day. Now, I've been told it's light that attracts moths, but it's way lighter out there than it is in here, and it still came in. It flew behind the computer, Let's see if it's still there. Nope, oh, it's up there on the TV now. Annoying pests. I know how to deal with these things though. There, that's what you get for invading my room and annoying me. Enjoy your new prison, it's gonna be your home for a while. Okay, I am gonna let it out later on. Right, well, I now believe I have a finished power supply using a microwave oven transformer. Let's just turn this around so you can see what's there. As you can see, I've soldered a rectifier onto the transformer's primaries, which are now the secondary. Unfortunately, it's only a 6 amp rectifier. I thought it was a bit more than that, but I looked it up in the data sheet and, well, not as powerful as I thought it would be, but I'm... If I power it for short periods of time, it shouldn't overheat. Put a big heat sink on it. I've got two big capacitors connected to the positive and negative, so we've got lots of filtering. Although I don't know what kind of voltage this is going to give out, so I'm going to power it up and test it with my meter. Then connect it to the ZVS driver. Okay, meter's connected. I'm now going to connect this up to the mains. And I know this is a, quite a dangerous way to do it, but let's just see what we get. Okay, there we go. Still going up. Wow, we've got about 31 volts so far out of this. Okay, it seems to be slowing down at about 31.4, about 31.5. Well, that should be plenty of voltage to power my ZVS driver. So, I'm going to get on and do that. Well, while I'm waiting for the soldering iron to warm up, just look at that sky. It's sunny and grey at the same time. That just looks awesome like that. Really got to scrape those dead bugs off the window as well. Several of the thousands of moths that I've killed this week that have been invading my room. I was reflecting on that window, I mean on that house. Grey sky. Yeah, lots of light reflecting. Right, well I've got everything connected up now, ready to test. And some of you may not think this is a very good idea. But at the plug, I have the neutral and the earth connected together. Some of you may think that's dangerous, but actually you get a really good ground that way. What can possibly go wrong? I'm going to plug it in. That is, if I can find a spare socket, I'll have to unplug my soldering iron. Okay, that's in. And nothing's blown up. Yet. Let's see if this works. Well, uh, this is rather less dramatic than I thought, and it looks like I'm going to have to rethink my strategy here. Well, bad news everybody, I tried to modify the microwave oven transformer by removing the secondary so I could put my own wire in there so I got plenty of voltage and current, 
but I couldn't get the secondary out. Got one part of the secondary which I just sawn off. And this is the rest of the microwave oven transformer. See, I've tried to get the secondary out, but it's just really wedged in there good. It just simply won't budge. I've tried to put a hammer in there and a piece of metal and bang it out, and I've only managed to make it move by about an eighth of an inch. And in doing that, I've damaged the second. I'm, I've damaged the primary, so that transformer's pretty much gone down the crapper. So it looks like another strategy rethink is in order. Well, since the microwave oven transformer modification was such a failure, I've decided to try and look at other means of powering this thing. Now, I've got two transformers. Both of these transformers are pretty good at delivering high current. Not exactly sure what their limit is, but I'm sure we'll be able to get something out of them. And I've wired them in series, and if I use this tap right there, after it's been rectified and smoothed, I get about 36 volts, which is overvolting these capacitors just a little bit, but I think they'll be I think they'll survive. Anyway, I'm gonna plug it in. Make sure this is disconnected first because I don't want anything shorting out while I'm not there to supervise anything. Right. I don't know how well you can hear that, but um this transformer is rather noisy because I did take it apart and put it back together. Couldn't get some of those laminates in, so it's a little bit vibraty. But we'll see what kind of thing we get now. And I haven't actually got my... Actually, um, I forgot to do my chicken stick thing. Why is it always... Whoa. I guess there was some energy left in those capacitors after all. Holy crap. The transformer's not even connected and it's doing that. How the hell? Okay, well, I think we have a pretty good ZVS driver there. Holy crap, that was one big arc, I can tell you. I have absolutely no idea how the power's getting in because, oh, it's the ground I've disconnected, not the transformers. It scared me, actually. I'm going to do that again. Alright, let's make some arcs. I'm going to show this in the camera very good. You know I want to touch it, but I'm not going to. Because that would be fatal. Okay, let's see how many amps this pulls. Going to connect my meter in line with the transformer. Okay, when it's idling. Okay, we're getting about 1.1 amp. Okay, just over an amp. And arcing. Ooh, we're getting 8.1 amp. That's quite a lot. Oh, look at that wire. Right, well, let's see what kind of a voltage drop we get. The voltage has dropped down to about 31.7 when it's idle, which is a little bit worrying see what voltage we get with an arc. 19 volts, is that all? There's a bit of a disappointing voltage drop there. Didn't think it would drop down that much. Oh, set the wire on fire. It's burnt the mat a bit. Oh, sniff that. That really stinks. So, as you can see, that works pretty well. It would work even better if I could find a better transformer that would provide me with about 30 volts and tons of amps, but... I'm probably overdriving that flyback as it is, so... I don't know if it would be able to survive that, but... 
That's just about it for this video. I can feel my intelligence draining away at the moment because mum's watching Family Guy in the other room and the TV is sucking my intelligence through the wall. Because, well, that's basically what that show does to people, but... Anyway, gotta go now before my intelligence is completely gone. So, until next time, goodbye. Well, that's it for this episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Remember, if you like these videos, feel free to subscribe, you'll be glad you did. And tell your friends about Cool Dude Clem and his Electronic Workshop. And, if you want to see the previous episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop, click on the box on the right. Or, if you want to see more of my videos, click on me right now to visit my channel. That's just about it for now. I'll see you next time. Well, I won't see you next time. But anyway, until next time, goodbye.